We are here in After Effects, and we're going to be doing a uh, 3D travel map assignment. So right now, I, I really don't have anything going on. Um, I have a few things up here of a comp, which I made. I have this travel map. Or no, that's a, that's a plane. Yeah, let, uh, let me scale it down so you guys can see what it is. Just the silhouette of a plane found on the internet. Uh, this is a travel map. It's literally just a map of the world, nothing too fancy. Scale that down. No, I'm gonna scale this one up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this plane and fly it across this map. Ooh, exciting stuff, right? So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and hide my plane for now because I, I don't really need it. If you notice, too, I have these these bars and borders going around my screen and then you can't really see it right now but in the center of the screen I have kinda of like a crosshair to turn that on I just went over to this little icon hovered and selected title action safe and the reason I did that is I just want to be able to see the, the where the center the exact center of my uh, uh, canvas is composition so when I do the start of the timeline I'm going to pick a location uh, since we're in the United States, why don't we start in the United States? I know, arrogant, right? I'm going to hit the record position. Actually, let me, hold on, where's the center? The center's here, so... We're going to start, let's start in Washington, D.C. I'm going to hit record on position. I'm going to go ahead, um... Let's just do, let's do the five second intervals. We're going to go to London. Why London? Because the people that live in my house, i.e. myself and my girlfriend, and our puppies and kits, kittens, we're all big fans of Doctor Who. So that's why we went to London, because the Doctor rocks. So we're in London. It automatically made a keyframe. I'm going to go ahead 10 seconds. Um, where in the world do we want to go now? Let's go to, let's go to Tokyo. No, that's boring. Let's go. To, let's go to Madagascar. Madagascar. I'm gonna scroll ahead five seconds. Now let's go to Tokyo. Uh, where's Tokyo? So then if I play the back really, really quick, watch. We start DC, it scrolls through, we see England, then we go down to Madagascar, then over to Japan, right? Very basic uh, animating. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the write on effect. And I just went to effect and presets and typed write, and it showed up here. I have my map selected, and I'm just going to double click. Uh, we're at the start of the timeline check we're gonna change the color to let's go red because that's like the cliche travel map size mm, I have no idea what size the brush is until it shows up so let's just put it at five hit my stopwatch on my brush position and I'm gonna say hey at zero seconds the brush should be right spinning beach ball of death yeah that's how we roll Come on. Let's try it again. So, zero seconds. <laughs> Press is going to be right there in Washington, D.C., right? I'm going to scrub ahead five seconds. Where was it? We were... What I should technically do is zoom in just to make sure I have the exact placement down. So we're saying, hey, at, at, at five seconds, have the brush over here in London. And then... Should go up to the 10 second mark. 10 second mark, the brush is supposed to be Madagascar. So I'm gonna set the position. And at the 15 second mark, we have it in Tokyo. 
So now if I were to scrub through, it's like, oh my gosh, look, this magic red line is just showing up. And then it goes to England. And then it goes to Madagascar. And then it goes up to Japan. Now if you've noticed, as it's going through here, there's this big curve. In this case, I don't think I want a curve. I think I want it to go from point A to point B. So a way to, to fix that is to adjust the keyframes. The keyframes that we did, we made were the, the brush positions on the right-on effect. So I need to go to my effects down here, go to right-on, and here's the brush position, right? So here's the, the four positions. I highlighted them. Watch, I just clicked. Just made a box around them, let go, so they're now they're yellow. I'm going to right-click any of them, and I'm going to select uh, keyframe interpolation. Where it says spatial interpolation, right now it's at auto bezer. Switch that to linear and click OK. So now if you notice, it's like ching, ching. Watch. Boom. Boom. Notice that there's a sharp angle now instead of a turn. Uh, it just looks a little nicer for what we're doing. Looking good, guys. Looking good. So now... Remember that plane? There it is. I'm going to scale it down some because right now it's massive. I'm also going to rotate it. Well, I'm just checking my... Uh, see how it lines up. There's several ways you can do this. We're going to do this the very simple and quick way. I'm going to click the rotation. I'm going to click position. I'm just going to scrub ahead a little bit. I'm just going to make sure I'm actually staying on that line. And that rotation's off, so I'm going to try to get that angle right. It's okay if it comes a little off the line for what I'm doing right now. I'm not really that worried about it. Then we're going to land in England. I'm going to zoom in all the way. So look, I'm, I'm, I zoomed in so on very specific frames. Just zoomed all the way in. I'm going to select my position. And select my rotation. And I just said, hey, at this place, make sure the rotation is still that. I'm going to go ahead one frame. And now I'm going to shift my plane to point towards Madagascar. I think Madagascar is that way. Zoom out. Fly to Madagascar. It's a little farther off from the red line than I want, so I'm just going to adjust that slightly. I'm not too worried about the red line because we're going to be working in 3D, so the red line is not going to be perfect anyway for what we're doing. Uh, land in Madagascar, probably right about there. Like a keyframe position, keyframe for rotation. Zoom in, jump ahead one frame. Let's rotate that bad boy. Rotate the other way. Japan, I think, is that direction, right? Let's uh, let's find out. Oh, that's awkward, right? That's very awkward. Flying to Japan. He's getting a little too far away from the red line. I'm just going to move him back a little. And it's 15 second mark, and I'm just going to scoot him right to where we want him. Right about there. So now if we scrub through, right? Watch this. It's a plane, and there's a red line, and he's going to all these cool places, and then he turns, and he goes to another two places. Now, what I probably should have done, I probably should have made that, that uh, the little flip there. A little bit smoother. You guys can do that if you want so it doesn't flip so hard. Maybe it just spins slightly and then takes off. It's up to you. Next thing I want to do is I want to right click my, my plane layer. I'm going to go to Layer Styles, Drop Shadow. So under the plane layer, I now have a Layer Styles. I'm going to expand Drop Shadow. I'm going to go to 
Let's try distance. There we go. So now if you notice, I have a little drop shadow here, right? So as I scrub through... It's like, oh my gosh, it's like a real plane leaving a shadow on the globe. How silly is that, right? Boom. We're not done yet because I'm going to go ahead and close all my layers. See this cube? This is what turns it into a 3D layer, right? Remember? So I'm going to select 3D and 3D. So now both 3D layers. I'm going to right click, select new. New camera. Just click OK, that's fine. So now we have a new camera. I'm going to open up the cameras, transform. I'm just going to hit record on everything. So that way, whatever I, I change it to, it doesn't make a difference. Let's start the camera at this angle, but then when it gets to London, we're going to spin it. What I do is I just grab the orbit tool and I'm just slowly adjusting. Then I'm going to grab the orbital, I'm going to grab the Z-axis. Well, I don't like that purple up there, so I'm just going to shift it back a little. And then our next stop is Madagascar. Madagascar, maybe I want to zoom in a little on it. I'm going to grab my orbital again. It's going to kind of like flatten it out so we really get a sense of that 3D-ness, right? And then we're going to go to Japan. And then Japan, I'm going to try and straighten this back out to close to where it was. And this should be zero. And we're still zoomed in a lot, so let's zoom out. No, a little too far. I don't like that white. All right, so let's check this out. So we have this plane. He's flying through. He switches. And that's the basic. That's basically how we made a little travel map. Uh, what I probably should do is I probably should go through now, and, and now that I have my camera set, my angles just make sure the plane lines up with that that red line and so it's just a matter of just going forward and up oh, it's falling off all right I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tweak them a little bit just line the tail the shadow of the tail up with the uh, the red line fill off again and I just manually tweak this over and over again just to make sure it doesn't get too far off track and so forth but that's yeah see now look I slowed through and it's like oh it's perfect. Oh, he's off again. Uh, slightly off. Slow. Oops. Not mean to do that. Slightly off. Way off. But anyway, as you can see, so I'm just that way. I'm, I'm, it looks like the red line is actually shooting out of the the plane's shadow's butt. So cool, so cool, so cool. And there you go. That's how you make a basic 3D travel map. Until next time, holla.